Question seven, part I says, given that P and Q are integers such that PQ is even, use algebra to prove by contradiction that at least one of P or Q is even. And this question is for three marks. So this is a proof by contradiction question and we're gonna use the NACC method, what I call the NAC method to solve this problem. And it's just the standard method that you can use to approach any proof by contradiction question. So the first thing we need to do is come up with a negation statement. Now, given that P and Q is even, and we've been asked to prove that at least one of P or Q is even, well, what's the negation to this statement? Well, it's that none of P and Q are even, or that P and Q are both odd. So we can start by saying that there exists integers P and Q such that their product is indeed even, but both P and Q are odd, okay? So you gotta be very careful with the wording when it comes to negation statements. So do check out my tutorial to learn how to come up with negation statements. Now, the next thing we need to do is assume that this statement is true. Now, in the exam, you don't actually need to write that down, okay? We can just bear that in mind and move on to the next part, which is really important that we show the examiner and that's performing some calculations based on the assumption that the negation statement is true. So assuming that both P and Q are odd, therefore we can write P as equal to 2M plus one and Q as equal to 2N plus one where M and N belong to the set of integers. And this is simply a way of algebraically showing that P and Q are odd numbers. So performing some calculations with these two expressions, let's multiply P and Q and see what the outcome is, okay? So multiplying P and Q, we get the following. P and Q is equal to 4MN plus 2M plus 2N plus one. We can then factor out two from part of this expression, giving the following, that P and Q is equal to two times by 2MN plus M plus N plus one. This here, what we've done is a very intentional algebraic manipulation because we're actually trying to test if PQ turns out to be odd or even based on the fact that we have set P and Q to be odd, okay? And if we look at this expression here, here we have two multiplied by a sum of values, which would be an integer. So two multiplied by any integer is going to be even. And if we add one to that, it's going to be odd and therefore PQ is odd, which is a contradiction because we assume that when both P and Q are odd, their product P times Q is even. However, we found out that PQ would actually turn out to be odd. So since we've come up with a contradiction, it means that our initial statement is true and it's always good practice to write the initial statement in the exam as a conclusion and say that therefore, if PQ is even, then at least one of P and Q is even. The last part says, given that X and Y are integers such that X is strictly less than zero and X plus Y all squared is strictly less than nine X squared plus Y squared, show that Y is greater than four X. And this is for two marks. So this is another proof question, but this time it's by mathematical deduction where we have to deduce this inequality from these two statements. Let's start with this second statement. So given this statement, let's expand the left-hand side of this inequality and we get x squared plus 2xy plus y squared is less than 9x squared plus y squared. The y squared terms cancel on both sides. And if we subtract x squared from both sides, we get the following. 2xy is less than 8x squared. And this is the point where a lot of students slipped up because the next stage would naturally be to divide both sides by 2x and get the inequality y is strictly less than 4x. However, since we're told that x is less than zero, we would be dividing both sides of the inequality by a negative number. And what do we need to do when we divide or multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number? We need to reverse the inequality sign. So in the next line, we have to tell the examiner that since X is strictly less than zero, it implies that after dividing both sides by 
2x, we get y is strictly greater than 4x, okay? So the only way to get full marks in this question was to clearly show the examiner that since x is less than zero, the inequality sign reverses and we get this inequality that y is strictly greater than 4x. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.